Hey everybody, thanks for joining. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about moving from T-SQL and SQL Server scripts and taking those SQL scripts and moving into Azure Data Factory's data flows. So essentially, you'd be moving from a SQL coding experience into a visual design experience set. So I want to do this in terms of taking some AdventureWorks transactional queries and breaking it down into the different transformation steps that make up data flows. Now, this will work both in Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics data flows, but you wouldn't always want to do this technique. I want to just show this to you so it would help you to learn. If you're familiar, familiar with SQL and you want to learn data flows in, in ADF and Synapse, this I, I hope will be helpful to you. But you wouldn't necessarily always want to break down a SQL script into the different elements like this because it may not be as performant as you'd want it to be. So I'll show you at the end how easy it is just to stick a SQL query inside of a, a source. Uh, you can also put SQL queries for pre and post processing scripts in a sync as well. but Either way, the, to really get the visual environment and be able to have that uh, graphically displayed for you so you can look at the different steps inside of Spark in your data flow, you do need to have different transformation steps for that. Okay, Okay, so let's get started. So before we build what you see on the screen, I want to show you what the query looks like. It's a very simple query that I am using, and it is against the AdventureWorks uh, database. Let me actually run this because I added a filter to this. I'm going to execute this. Now, uh, what I'm doing is I'm pulling out the uh, customer names and addresses by doing a uh, join. It's an inner join against a bridge table that has the uh, customer ID and the address ID so that we can bring those together. And then the uh, the filter and the where clause is looking for only customers in the states of Washington and Pennsylvania because they relate dearly to my heart. So I chose those up for that purpose. Now, so let's look at what those SQL constructs look like inside of a data flow in ADF and Synapse. So because I was joining three tables, I have three different sources. Ignore this source uh, query at the bottom. That's what I'm going to show you at the end in terms of just clobbing together that uh, query and sticking into a source. I have three tables, the customer address, the customers, and the address um, table. So first, these are three different source transformations. For, first, let's look at the customer source. In that case, I called my data set as AW, AdventureWorks, customer address. My source option is the actual table itself. The table name will come in the data set. So if you click open next to the data set, you'll see the table name appear here. It is salesLT.customeraddress. And then under projection, what happens is the data set will store and be able to retrieve the schema from the source. So there you see the projection from the schema. And this is mapping the customer ID to the customer uh, to the address ID. And that's all that does. It just sits off here as a source that is just utilized later. You'll see it right. Sorry, it's called cust address. You'll see it right here as part of this join. Now the main table was customers. So that's this table with this projection. The data set then points to um, my customers table in AdventureWorks. And the projection just looks like this. It's the same thing as if you were just looking at the projection in your database table over here in Manager Studio. Same set of data will appear there. Now, while you're working in this environment, in the design environment, in Data Factory with data flows, you can always click on the refresh button to preview your data. I have my debug session turned on. This spins up a Spark cluster for me so I can interact with it and interact with my data. So this will bring back the data. This is from the source transmission. So you see the data as it is before any work, any joining, or any transformation is done on that data. Okay, so there we go. So it is essentially a select star and has all the columns. Uh, the only difference being that there is a limit to the number of rows, and that's set in debug settings. The row limit is default to 1,000 because this data preview is meant for data sampling. You can change that limit at your own uh, desire. And so then the third source is the address, uh, which is, let me open this up, the data set points to slt.address. So these are essentially these tables here, customer address, customer, and address. All right, back to the data flow. Now that we have all three of our sources loaded into memory inside of this data flow, we can begin to work on it. Ignore the row counts for now. I'll talk about that in a minute. But let's build the join. So you're going to go from the source, which is the customer source. That'll be your left-hand side of the join. And we're going to add a right-hand side by clicking the plus sign in the join transformation. When you add the join transformation, you'll configure it down here at the bottom. My right-hand side is going to be the customer address that has the address ID in it. So we're going to match on customer ID, and we're going to do an inner join. So that essentially is equivalent to inner join customer address on customer ID. Now we're doing two joins, so we had one more join right after that. You had join again, 
and we're going to join the address table. So the address table is coming from this source called aw address, and we're joining on the address ID, and that matches this part of the inner join down here. Now that we've joined the data, we do a select. So the select is coming right here. This is these are the columns I'm selecting from those tables. And so to do a select, you add a select transformation within your data flow. This will be column selection. All right. And with within the column selector, you'll see options like skip um, a duplicate input and output columns because a lot of times when you're joining data across a wide variety of lake sources or database sources, you're going to have duplicate uh, columns and we can just drop them here using that checkbox. And then you just pick the columns from the selector uh, that you want to keep. And then you can rename them here on the right-hand side. These are essentially the same as an alias in SQL. All right, great. So we've got all that done. Last thing is to do the filter. The filter is where the state province equals Washington or Pennsylvania. So the way to do that in a data flow is to add a filter transformation right there. And then inside there, you're going to type a very simple uh, expression, and it's just state province equals Washington or state province equals Pennsylvania. It's a slightly different syntax, and you can use the expression builder to validate and verify all that syntax and also look up all of our uh, transmission functions. And that's this. Now when you get to the end and you hit a data preview on that, you will see the exact same data that we see here in the Management Studio, where we're only seeing Washington and Pennsylvania uh, rows. And we have the customer ID, the customer name, and we have their address together uh, on the same row. All right, and there we have it. Okay, now let's talk about those aggregates I was putting in there. I put the aggregates in there for a couple of reasons. One is it's a common thing inside of data flows and EDF to use row counts to, to validate and view the data as it changes shape, making sure you have the number of rows that you want. You can always get that data uh, from the data preview as well. It would give you the row count without you needing to do it manually. But this way, if you, if you do add it, yourself as an aggregate, this is an aggregate transformation, you click uh, plus aggregate, you can then store that um, in an output uh, file. So any of these um, non-terminated streams or flows can be terminated with a sync. So I can add a sync on here that would land that data into a um, logging file or an auditing file that has the row count in it. But here I'm just storing it just in memory just so I can see uh, what it is. And in this case, the row count is just um, an aggregate with no group by. Essentially, this is a um, select count star if you are coming from SQL. And you use the count expression. So uh, count is a function expression that we have. And then you assign that to a column. Uh, this can be a new column. So this is essentially be aliasing. So think about it this way. It's the same as saying um, select count star from, let's do uh, sales LT dot, um, let's do customer. And then we just alias that as, um, in this case, it would be like, uh, how about my row count? And so that is what that would look like here inside of a um, data flow. And we can do the same thing here. We'll do a data preview on that as well. Now, the other, the last thing I want to show you is, and there you go. So the last thing I want to show you is a very common thing when you're moving from stored procedures in SQL into um, an ETL tool like ADF is that you will need to have parameters passed. Because in this case, I'm just bringing back all of the rows. But in many cases, you'll execute this ETL with a, um, with a set of specific values you're looking for. So the way you would do parameters in data flows and data factory is to use the parameter section. So in the uh, main screen for the data flow, I just set a parameter, I said new parameter, and I said cust a customer ID. So now what you can do is you could filter that differently. You could change the filter and you would take out the state filter and we could use that, um, that parameter. We could say a uh, customer ID and the column is called You'll see it from the um, input schema, customer ID. So we'll say customer ID equal to the parameter. When that's the case, then that's the only row that we want. In this case, it's just one. And then while that's doing that, I'll show you also from the pipeline, when you execute your um, data flow from a pipeline, you will then pass in a parameter. So I have a pipeline here. And when you add that data flow as an activity into your pipeline, you'll have a uh, opportunity to set that permanent value here. And I just hard coded it, but you could use dynamic values and you can pull values from a database or from a flat file or some other means. Okay, so back in the data flow, we got back just that single customer ID and we should see that same value if we do it over here. So we'll change the filter over here using the where clause. And we need to specify, let's take that from a.customerID is the incoming value. 
and it's not double equals. That was from the data flow. Thank you very much. Thank you, myself. It will execute it. And then we see uh, Catherine Abel, 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 same thing as here. Okay, so one last thing. Let's go back to what I said earlier, which is that in many cases, you may just want to take that entire SQL query, like for example, this one here that we were just working with, and just add that into the source query in your data flow. And that way, what ADF can do is it can push down that query into the database engine and take advantage of the database engine database optimizer. In this case, that's probably a good option uh, to do. So in the source options, just select query, paste the query in here, and you'll be able to get the uh, full projection from the select statement and the filter from the where clause on a single step. So making a choice between the two is really going to be uh, something you have to sort of evaluate as you're moving maybe larger stored procedures into ADF and data flows in terms of what do you rework as a graph and which ones do you just take as is. You can also add, like I was saying earlier, you can also add queries into the um, settings on a sync. So within a sync in um, Data Factory, when that query is a, I'm not going to use this one, let's actually do one down here. When that query is a database, when that sync is a database type, you have the ability to execute pre and post processing scripts. So you can take some of your existing code and reuse it here as well. All right, so hopefully that gives you some idea of how SQL constructs equate to data factories, data flows, and how you'd move from one to the other. So thanks for watching.